because we take that I/O and we pass it and do some clever stuff with with clever queries, and pass it down to the X data storage cells and let them do the work. So what you will see at the moment is internally where we've been maxing uh, some of our important key database machines <coughs> is that we've not had much resource in the box to do other things, especially at the end of end of year um, processing. And what we've done is you'll see it, the load's just dropped because we've offloaded it and, and made the extra story cells do the work. Other clever things in the X data storage cells are these, the, the flash cache. Uh, they went from 384 uh, gig within the old X22 storage cells to I think they're at 1.6 terabytes. So they went from each X data storage cell has four of these flash cache cards in there. Each flash cache card has, or well, the old T4 X22 ones, have 24 gig. Uh, flash modules, four per card, so 16, and it worked out at three of them. They just upped them from 24 uh, gig to 96 gig, so there's a vast amount of uh, available storage there for uh, reducing your um, reads and writes. In terms of the hybrid uh, kind of a compression, again, it's to do with uh, reducing the amount of space your database is using and making the X data do all the work to make it do all the uncompressing on the fly as you request it from periods. So as I said, I mean, X-Data is not my speciality. If it's something you really are interested in, I know somebody's at the back, uh, we can get someone to come along and talk in, in detail about it. Uh, sorry, sure. So, I'm trying to put like a black box for me. So, you, have, you are talking about clustering. So you are going to cluster your servers Am I right? Or yes. Okay, yeah. so you cluster your servers. But I assume that you have some kind of, as well, independent that you know Exadata or whatever, you are going to build that cluster depends on the business necessity or how you are going to build that, that cluster. So how you are going to decide how to build that cluster. That comes down to your business requirement. Exactly. Or, so yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, okay. When I come to show you a bit later on about the, the available navigation options, We've changed from T4 uh, based on, I think it was 30 configuration options for how you can slice and dice the hardware up mm -hmm. for, for T4. Uh, we've moved away from that now to T5. I, I wouldn't like to calculate how many different configuration mm -hmm. options yeah. there are. You, you have um, essentially uh, four domain choices on a half rack, uh, T58. And on a T5, eight, full rack, you have eight domain mm -hmm. choices. For each of those domain choices, you can slice and dice the hardware up mm -hmm. to whatever suits you, but based on uh, an X-Data database domain, uh, an S10 application mm -hmm. domain, or an S11 application yeah, domain. Okay. So, yeah, what the world's your oyster. We've, we've taken yeah. away that, that limit uh, and given you the option of how to best fit the hardware into your okay. we're on we have a team that works with customers so, yeah. so this is my colleague Keith Bond so he works <laughs> on the same team as me and he's so he's there prompting him. <laughs> so, sorry, yeah. so yeah Keith, Keith's right there is, there is um internally within Oracle there is a team called the S team uh, they are specifically there to if you find that supercluster can meet your business requirements they will work with you mm. to find out your existing legacy ar architecture, what you want to do with the platform, and they'll work out the best configuration choice. So I, haven't, I wasn't going to add it into this, this, this uh, presentation, but uh, as part of the configuration and installation mm -hmm. service, they will work with you. You fill a workbook in to how you want to slice and dice, dice that up, and we do all the rest. We're going to come along and install it to, to meet your requirements. So your L on limitation is supercluster. It's a lim limitation of supercluster. Really. Yes, and that's based on the throughput and the U. Yes, that's based on the, yeah, okay. the the number of PCI root complexes, yeah. and to ensure we get balance. Yeah. And what you don't want to do is start getting domains that start utilising. Yeah. So if I just bought a T5, I can just do what I like with it. Yeah. 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 Y
Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a limitation. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is that the available configurations are constrained to ones yeah. that are not mm -hmm. uh, least desirable <laughs> configurations. Well, it goes back to the, the first diagram of yeah. don't stick yourself out on the plane and lines are browning around. Is, is that based on some trust or do you force that even in the supercluster? In, in terms of configuration? Yeah, you, you don't have the choice uh, in yeah, terms yeah. of um, exceptions are possible. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. try to discourage them because of Andy's first slide. Yeah. Yeah, you sure. don't want yeah. you to go to those dangerous places. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Andy. That's all right. Okay. Thank you. So, a bit before we go into the rest of it, this is just a diagram that shows. The exadata uh, storage cell and architecture of how things are seen as far as the, the database is concerned. So, similar concepts to um, T4, the supercluster, and now T5, and exadata uh, is that we, as far as you as database or Solaris administrators, you have no access to this, mm -hmm. the exadata storage cells. Just out of interest, how many people have either got an Exadata or have seen one? Cardboard, I think. Apart from the cardboard one. <laughs> so, um, for you as Solaris people, um, you won't see these, you have no access to these from the compute nodes. So, in terms of um, supercluster, uh, the components, the t 58 in T4 world are the compute nodes. These are database machines or application uh, machines held on. Uh, and the exadata uh, access the storage cells via InfiniBand um, using the RDS protocol down through ASM, so Oracle's Automatic Storage Manager, uh, down into the storage cell software. Uh, and each of the physical disks, there are 12 in there. They're sliced up as um, from physical disks to cell disks, and then we stick a grid layer on top. So it's a bit like this suite, uh, Veritas Volume Manager, how you access it. You're using this mechanism to, to make use of the, the, the resources there. And again, you've got um, HA capabilities within the storage cell software. You can create disk groups. You can slice and dice the, the storage cells up for use in multiple databases. For using RAC, you need a minimum of three to provide high availability. You also need three if you want to do uh, patching in a, in a safe and effective manner because you don't want to do uh, live patching of the storage cells while you've got production data going through them. So what they usually do is do them in a rolling fashion. So I'll take one cell out, patch it, and bring it back in, let it sync up, like with most disk management uh, software, uh, and let you continue and do one at a time. So, uh, again, we'll go and jump on a cell in a, in a little while, and I might jump back to this diagram. We'll start poking around and have a look and see what we can see. And then, obviously, if you've got questions, then please ask. <coughs> so, again, these are, these are the same bits of hardware that are in the exadata. They're an upgrade on the X2 storage cells. I guess the most prominent point to make is the, the increased uh, flash cache, <coughs> slightly faster cores, and they've increased the memory from 24 gig to, to 64 gig. And again, they use the special special source, the X data source, uh, again, being used by database domains. So you can't use them for general purpose, and they, they can only be used by 11G release 2 database domains. Mm -hmm. So, an important thing to remember if you're going through a consolidation exercise within your business, and you've got lots of legacy applications that are sitting in 10G, 11G, uh, you have to make sure that you can upgrade them and the application supports them. Because it would be slightly embarrassing if you end up purchasing one of these and work out that your third party application vendor doesn't support the database. <coughs> And yes, it has happened. So in each of the 
super fluster racks. Uh, you get for a half rack you get four storage cells, for a full rack you get eight storage cells. Uh, and if that doesn't meet your requirements, uh, or it becomes a point further down the line where you need more space for business to grow, then you can you can add on one of these uh, in a quarter, half or full rack. Again they just bolt onto the Affinity Band network. And the ASM software within Dexter storage cells add them straight into your existing disk groups. So you could do with using ZFS, disk suite, or some of the other third-party disk management tools. So you've got that, that, that expandability uh, moving forward. No change from um, T4 to T5 uh, ZFS storage clients. It's accessed via um, all domains uh, within the supercluster. Um, you can get to it if you really wanted to from the database domain, uh, but it's not mounted by default. In fact, we, we only during install will uh, add some default mounts to the application domains. We will use the ZFS storage client. So don't forget, this, this, this has no set use case in supercluster. So it's it's free storage. It's there for you to either put your application binaries on there um, for use as a backup device from the database, um, or you can use it as um, the forum device if you decide to go down the Oracle Sun cluster route. So it really comes down to you um, how, how it best fits your, your business. How many people have seen one of these? Really? Okay. We'll have a, have a look on one later on. Um, so in terms of what you get in the rack, so you get your compute nodes, you get your x storage cells, you get your ZFS storage plants, you have the ability to connect up third-party storage. Now one could ask, if you've got all this great class storage in there, why would you want to attach some uh, third-party storage? Uh, one reason might be you might want to, to be migrating from your existing legacy ar architecture. Um, so you have the ability to do that. It may be that you have existing third-party storage that is still good good use. It's one of your existing applications and you still want to use it with the general purpose domain. So you can plug it in. The only constraint we do um, put in place is for um, database domains in that we only allow you to connect out just to migrate only. So, in addition to the other components I've mentioned before, obviously the, the, the bits that bind it together are the infinity band switches. Uh, there are three of them, uh, two in what we call leaf mode, uh, and one in a spine. Uh, the spine comes into more use when you start racking these things together, and you can rack up to eight together. Mind you, you need to make sure you've got enough floor space and, <laughs> or overhead space because the infinity band cables are you know, five, five pence <laughs> diameter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And if you're going for a, a full eight rack configuration, you need 64 additional infinity band cables. Hence, why you need lots of floor space or ceiling space. To come up. So, obviously, um, there are a number of uh, HCA cards. Um, they're in all the x storage cells, they're in the ZFS storage clients, and they're in the compute nodes. And depending on how you slice and dice, you may end up with uh, more than one Infinity Band card in your configuration. If, for example, you have a full rack configuration, uh, and you need to add in some third party or some fiber channel cards or some other third party cards as long as on the supported list and you don't have enough room because they're all being used by affinity band cards or 10 gig network cards then you can remove one or the other to fit your needs as long as your configuration will support it and again we can look at that in a bit as well so as you can see, it starts to get slightly complex in the number of, of infinity band cables that are in the rack anyway. And they're all pre-cabled for you, so you don't have to do that when you get one. 
And I said, you can deploy up to eight. But don't forget.